Students, once again, you welcome to Wisdom Academy. Today, we are looking at chemistry, chapter chapter 16. And our topic for today is ammonia, hydrogen, nitrogen, and ammonia. Okay? Because hydrogen and nitrogen are actually the requirement or ingredient for making ammonia. So, we, our topic is actually the manufacture, manufacture of uh, ammonia. So, first of all, we start with the first gas, hydrogen. Hydrogen is the lightest uh, gas, is the lightest uh, element on Earth, is the lightest, lightest of all the gases that we have, and is even less dense than air, and it's so so much so that it is uh, very difficult to find hydrogen in our in our, in the atmosphere now. It's very difficult to find hydrogen. Okay, it's uh, so light that there is none again in the air. We don't have hydrogen in the air anymore. Okay? Hydrogen is so light that we don't have any of it in the air. They all escape to the to the Earth's atmosphere, to higher atmosphere. So if we want hydrogen, is either we manufacture it in the in the laboratory or we get it in the sun. A lot of uh, the sun is made up of huge bank of hydrogen gas. The sun, the sun is made up of a uh, very huge uh, hydrogen gas, very huge uh, hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas, they react together, they react together to produce what we call the helium, the helium uh, gas. So in the sun, we have a lot of hydrogen gas and a lot of helium gas. Now this hydrogen and the helium, when they react, they produce heat and uh, light. The heat and light we get from the sun is as a result of hydrogen that reacts in the sun. The heat and light we get in the sun is as a result of hydrogen that is reacting. Okay, so hydrogen is no more in our air around us. It's not so much, it's no more in our air. It has escaped. It's so light that it has escaped. But you can find it in the Earth's atmosphere, in the higher ground, in the higher atmosphere. Okay, a good place where we can find a lot of hydrogen is there, is in the sun. However, we can manufacture hydrogen in the laboratory. They manufacture hydrogen gas in the laboratory. It's super light, so light, okay? In this space, it is the most common element in the universe. In the universe or multiverse. Hydrogen is the most common element you can find in the universe or in the multiverse. Okay? So, although it's not in our air as it stands, but in the outer space, Hydrogen is the most common element. It's the most common element that you can find in the entire universe or multiverse. If, you, if you're looking at all, all the universes, okay? If you're looking at more, more than one universe, we're talking about the uh, multiverse. Okay, so hydrogen is so important that we need it. We need it to even make water. You know, hydrogen has to react with oxygen to make water, to manufacture the water we drink. So hydrogen is used as light, as radiation, as heat, as so many things used for so many things, right? So it's very important. It's also used for manufacturing ammonia. Ammonia is so much so important. And ammonia is the second most manufactured chemical in the universe. Ammonia is the second most manufactured chemical in the universe after uh, H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. After sulfuric, sulfuric acid is the most is the most manufactured uh, chemical in the world. Sulfuric acid is the most manufactured chemical on earth. The second most manufactured chemical. This is number one uh, most manufactured chemical. The second most manufactured chemical is ammonia. Ammonia is made with using nitrogen and hydrogen. So you see why hydrogen is very important. We need to know where we can get hydrogen from in the manufacturing of ammonia, even in the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Okay, so hydrogen is, in the, is present in the most manufactured chemical on Earth and is present in the second most manufactured chemical on Earth. So that's why it's very important for us to know the source of hydrogen, where we can get it from. So we say there are a lot of it in the outer space and there are a lot of it in the sun. So the reactions of hydrogen result to helium in the sun and so on and so forth. Okay, now making hydrogen in the lab. Since 
we don't have it in the air around us. So how do we then make uh, hydrogen in the laboratory? How do we then make so that we can have it? We, because we need to have abundance of hydrogen in order to make, in order to manufacture ammonia, which is the second most manufactured chemical, and in order to manufacture sulfuric acid, the H2SO4, which is the first most man manufactured chemical. So let's take a look at the lab. What do we need to? How do we make hydrogen? Okay. Permit us, we use small h for hydrogen, ordinarily it's capital letter H, okay? Now, hydrogen is made in the lab by using metal to drive it out. Uh, that's to display, you use metal to, 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 to react with uh, uh, dilute uh, sulfuric acid uh, so that the, 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 the metal will drive the hydrogen out. Like, it's called displacement reaction. You take uh, an aqueous solution of sulfuric acid you know, I told you sulfuric acid is the most manufactured gas on earth, or chemical. That's not, not gas, it's a chemical so, uh, solution. So it's the most manufactured chemical, this sulfuric acid. So you take a sulfuric acid, you take a sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. Now, there's hydrogen in it in its combination. It's part, as part of its constituent element. There's hydrogen in the constituency of uh, sulfuric acid. So what we need to do in order to get hydrogen gas, is to drive this hydrogen out of this uh, uh, compound. Is to drive hydrogen out of this compound. To do that, you have to take metal that is higher in reactivity series. You have to take metal that is higher than hydrogen in the reactivity series. So, in order for us to uh, further further this discussion, we have to look at the reactivity series of uh, uh, of metals. The, you know that the most reactive metal is a uh, is a uh, uh, potassium. So I use symbol. Because if you want to write the name, it takes a lot of time. The second most reactive, uh, uh, other reactivity is sodium. Okay, is sodium. The third one is uh, calcium. Okay. Then this, uh, we will show with the arrow the, the order of their reactivity. Then the next one is magnesium. The next one is magnesium. Okay, in the reactivity series. So you know the one that is higher can displace the one that is lower in the compound. The one that is higher as a metal can displace... Any of the other one in the, in combination in a compound form in combination with other elements in the compound form can displace that one can drive it out of its position and take this uh, the space. So after magnesium we have aluminium in the reactivity series, right? After aluminium in the reactivity series of metal we look at uh, zinc. Okay, we look, we have zinc in the reactivity series of metal. Then after zinc we have uh, we have iron. Okay, in the reactivity series of metals. So we need students need to be familiar with these elements, how they are, they are arranged in the reactivity, in the increasing reactivity order. After iron, we have lead. We have lead, Pb. Okay, after lead, after lead, then we have hydrogen. So we can draw the dichotomy, we can draw a line and say, okay, hydrogen exists after lead. So here we have hydrogen. We have hydrogen. Although hydrogen is not a metal, but it's always uh, dragging shoulder, raising shoulder with metals. Always in the in, in the wherever metal is, is always surfacing and showing that he uh, he can do what the what metals can do. Okay. Then after hydrogen is higher than copper in the activity, so it's funny enough. So hydrogen can displace uh, uh, copper in a solution. In a solution, is that okay? So we after copper, we have silver. After copper, we have silver, and after silver, we have gold. After silver, we have uh, gold. Now, this is the reactivity series of metals. This is the reactivity series of metals. All students need to know this. Okay, without missing our words, students need to know this in order of reactivity. You, you need to know this to help you in the exam. You need to know this by heart. Okay, this is, uh, this is the position of hydrogen. This is the position of uh, hydrogen. This is the position of hydrogen. So hydrogen, you can see hydrogen is here. You can see hydrogen is here. So hydrogen can displace copper, can display silver, and can display gold. But every other element like lead, iron, zinc, aluminium, magnesium, calcium, uh, sodium, and potassium, we displace hydrogen. So what it means, if we come back to what we are saying, what it means is that in this compound, you can, uh, if you take any element that is higher than hydrogen reactivity series, if you drive this hydrogen out, so hydrogen will be produced separately. 
Now, such element like zinc, if we take zinc, for example, if we decide to take zinc, zinc can drive because it's higher. Why, why should or why is zinc able to drive the hydrogen out? Because zinc, look at zinc in the reactivity series here, because zinc is higher in reactivity than, than hydrogen. Remember, reactivity series of metal, the one that is higher can displace the one that is lower in its compound. The one that is higher as an element can display the one in a compound form. Is that okay? So this zinc will drive this hydrogen out. Drive out means it will displace it. It will displace the hydrogen from here. So it will produce what we call zinc sulfate. It will be zinc will replace this uh, hydrogen. So here we become zinc sulfate, like we have here. It becomes zinc sulfate, an aqueous solution. Okay? It becomes a zinc sulfate instead of hydrogen sulfate. Instead of uh, hydrogen sulfate, it becomes zinc sulfate. Right? So the hydrogen has been driven out to be on its own. So that's how hydrogen is being manufactured in the laboratory. So com a, a common way or method to make hydrogen in the lab is simply to take uh, sulfuric acid and reacting it with zinc. If zinc is commonly used most of the time. Zinc is commonly used. So, but if you want to look at the laboratory react uh, reaction, we can uh, draw a conical flask. We can show it with a conical flask. Okay. If you want to look at the laboratory uh, condition, reaction, and so on and so forth. So we put zinc, we put zinc metal here at the bottom here, a small lump of solids. Okay, we put zinc metals here, a small lump of solids, right? We put zinc metals here, a small lump of solid, and then we conk this place. We open like a, a flask or a bure, something like that, to be able to release the the sulfuric acid to drop the sulfuric acid here okay and then we conk we conk this place conk means we seal it up we ensure we ensure no energy is there we ensure no energy is escaping from here or no nothing is escaping from here is that okay so let's conk this place so we come this place means we close up this whole place. Means we close up. We close up this whole place. Okay, we come here. Okay, don't mind our drawing. Don't mind our drawing. We come here. We come here. So everything is sealed up. So and then we we. We, in this flask, we release a channel where it, uh, the reaction will go, where the reaction will go to, like downward displacement. We bring a downward displacement to, to this place. Okay, so in the laboratory, this is what we do. In order to manufacture hydrogen gas, this is what we do. This is what we do. Okay, so this is what is taking place. Here we have Then here, let's put the hydrogen uh, sulfuric acid here. Then we'll put a, a conk or something to close this place. But we open it before this hydrogen gas uh, sulfuric acid will drop into, into this place. When it drops, a reaction will happen between zinc. See, this is zinc. This one is zinc. Zn. Zinc, zinc metal. This is H2SO4. This is the H2SO4. That's the sulfuric acid. In the laboratory, this I'm showing you the laboratory experiment. Okay, how you prepare with a diagram to show what is happening in the laboratory. So this is sulfuric acid. You, this is just like 
a knob to open like a tap. You open this tap. This one is a tap. You open this tap. This uh, sulfuric acid will drop. Okay, we drop it to this place. And when it mixes with the zinc, it will react and they uh, begin to uh, melt the zinc and displace the zinc. The zinc will not be in a, in a solution form and it will travel to this, uh, to move and be displaced in this place. The solution will come here through this place and come down all the way to this place and produce what we call the zinc sulfate. So here you have uh, you have uh, water. You have water here. This one is water. H2. H2O. This is water. Above the water, the hydrogen gas will be produced here. You may not see it, it's tiny. The hydrogen gas will be displaced above the water. Here you have the hydrogen gas that is being manufactured in the lab. Okay? It will be displaced over water. The hydrogen gas will be manufactured. So this is what is happening. This is the manufacture, the process of my because it is the gas that will be that will be able to move out of this place. The remaining here will be zinc sulfate. After the, they react with this zinc, they will form zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas will be released. It will go as a bubble, as bubble, and come over and pass over water to this place. Okay? So this is what is happening in the laboratory the, in the manufacturing of uh, hydrogen. Now, okay, but this is the equation you need. This is just the equation you need and this diagram for your exam, the manufacturing of uh, hydrogen. You need this equation, zinc. This uh, state symbol, this is a state symbol. This it means solid, zinc solid. You know, zinc Zn is the symbol of zinc. So this is state symbol, S. S means solid. React with aqueous, which is a, aqueous, which is a solution. React with uh, sulfuric acid. This is sulfuric acid. So if you want to write the name, if you don't know what it is, we can put the name. This is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. Okay, they add with sulfuric acid. They add with sulfuric acid to produce what? Zinc sulfate and to produce zinc sulfate and hydrogen. This zinc to produce zinc sulfate and acid. And sorry, and hydrogen gas. Produce zinc sulfate. Produce zinc. To produce zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate to produce zinc sulfate and hydrogen. This is hydrogen gas. Okay, so this is how we manufacture hydrogen in the lab. It's very basic and it's very easy. So just take zinc to react with uh, sulfuric acid, you get uh, zinc sulfate and hydrogen. Now this is how we get it. Since the hydrogen is no more in our in the air, since hydrogen is no more in the air, we have to manufacture the hydrogen. And use this hydrogen to make ammonia, use this hydrogen to make sulfuric acid, use this hydrogen to make many things. So many things we manufacture, even water, okay? And so many things we do that requires uh, uh, hydrogen. Now, let's, since we already seen how hydrogen is being manufactured in the lab, now let's take a look at the properties of hydrogen. We've looked at how it's being manufactured in the lab, and we say that hydrogen is in the outer space, it's, it's a lot in the outer space. It's not much in the in our atmosphere as as much. It's not much in our atmosphere or in the air. It's in the higher atmosphere, in the higher earth atmosphere and in the outer space. That's where we have a lot of it. The ones we have already like gone extinct. Hydrogen are no more because it's too. Well, the reason why we don't have in the air is so less dense. It's so it's so less dense that it has all escaped. Now let's take a look at the properties of hydrogen. Property number one. We say hydrogen is the lightest gas. It's the lightest of all the gases. You know what that means, right? It's the lightest. It's so light. It's about 20 times lighter than air. About 20 times. About 20 times lighter. 20 times. I put X. X means times. 20 times lighter than air. So hydrogen is about 20 times lighter than air. You know, air is a mixture of gases. You have nitrogen in the air, you have
carbon dioxide in the air, you have oxygen in the air, but hydrogen is 20 times lighter than, than air. So it's so light. Okay? As a result of this, it's no more in the air. Okay? It's no more in the air. You can find it in the out outer space and you can find it in the sun. We say there's a lot of hydrogen reaction in the sun, forming, balloon, forming helium, helium gas every time. Okay? And there's a lot of it that happens when the sun reacts. Okay, the heat energy and the light energies are being released from the ratio of hydrogen gas, hydrogen in the, in the sun. Number two property is that we say it is a colorless uh, gas. Hydrogen is a color. It doesn't have a color. You cannot say it's pink, it's red, it's, uh, it's uh, yellow, it's blue, it's uh, green, it's this. You cannot say it's colorless. It doesn't have a color. It's a colorless gas and with no smell. It doesn't smell. Okay, you know there are some gas that smell like chloric gas, some gas they have pungent smell, they have choky smell. But hydrogen does it, it does it, it doesn't have a smell and it doesn't have a color. So it's so unique. This is a, a very unique uh, feature for hydrogen. And no, another tip, another another property of hydrogen is that it combines with oxygen to form what? To form water. It combines with oxygen. Yeah, of course. So you can say hydrogen, hydrogen plus Hydrogen gas plus oxygen, react with oxygen gas, they will produce water. So you can see this is another property of hydrogen. Okay, react with oxygen to produce air, to produce water, to produce water. So you have H2O. So the rest you can balance the equation as you dare wish. You balance the equation as we wish. H2O. So we can put two here. So hydrogen atoms are now four, while oxygen is two. So we put two here to balance this uh, hydrogen. So this becomes a balanced equation. Water is a liquid. So we put the state symbol in bracket. We must put the state symbol in bracket to show that they are state symbols. And every equation you write, you have to put the state symbols. Balance the equation and also put state symbol in order to maximize the max. Okay, from 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 emanating from there. So we say it combines, hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water. So this is the equation for that, how it combines with oxygen to form uh, water. Now it's more reactive than copper. I, I think we've shown that in the reactivity series. When we show the reactivity series, we show that hydrogen is more reactive than copper. You can say copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So you need to commit this to the memory. Hydrogen is more reactive than copper. It's more reactive than copper. Okay, hydrogen is more reactive. And like I said, this reactivity series, this reactivity series, you need to commit it in the memory. You need to commit the reactivity series in the memory. So it's easy for you to know which metal is higher in the reactivity series than the other. Which metal is higher in the reactivity series than the other. And because in displacement reaction, the order of reactivity of metal is very important, is very cognizant. Okay? Reactivity series, the order of their reactivity, of the arrangement in the of metals in the reactivity series is super important. So if we don't know which one is higher, we will not know which one can display the other one. The reason why you need to know which metal is higher than the other is because if you don't know, you will know, if you don't know that potassium is higher than sodium, you will know that potassium can display sodium in a solution. When sodium is in a solution, potassium can display sodium in a solution. So that's what we mean by reactivity series and why you need to know the reactivity series of metal. Now let's talk about another property. Uh, we say it's more reactive than copper. Okay, I think we've talked about that. Now let's go to nitrogen. We've talked about extensively about uh, hydrogen a lot. Remember we said this topic for today is about hydrogen, nitrogen and ammonia. And ammonia is being manufactured in the laboratory and it requires hydrogen and nitrogen to make ammonia. Uh, in the process known as the Haber process, known as the Haber process, and we're going to look at the equations and the re, 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 how the equation, the reaction is a reversible reaction, probably in probably in, in our next class. Okay, today nitrogen is a colorless gas. Also, is a color is colorless, odorless, and uh, colorless, odorless, and uh, all reactive gas that makes up about eighty percent of the air. So it's so much in the air. Nitrogen is so much in the air. So, so much in the air. It's about 78%. 78% of the 
which is approximately rounded to the nearest 10. If you round it to the nearest 10, you get 80%. You get 80%, okay? It's just an approximated number, okay? So nitrogen is uh, around 78%, which when we approximate to the nearest 10, we get about 80%, okay? So which means what this tells us is that the air is te technically nitrogen. The air is technically nitrogen. But it's not the nitrogen that we breathe in, it's the oxygen. Oxygen is around 21, 20 to 21% in the air. Uh, 20, approximately 21%, if you approximate to the nearest whole number, around 21% in the air. But nitrogen is so much in the air, so we will not think how we can extract the nitrogen in the air for, for our use. Now, but you also take in nitrogen in protein of your food. Every time you eat protein food, there is nitrogen. Because all protein food, it is the nitrate, you know, when glucose is manufactured during the process of photosynthesis, when you make your glucose, in order for, this is glucose, C6, H12, O6. This is uh, uh, your, the formula of glucose, okay? When glucose is manufactured, then this glucose will then react with uh, nitrogen to make a uh, protein, react with nitrogen and probably maybe a, bit, a little bit of sulfur and magnesium to make what we call the but mostly nitrogen in, uh, in order to manufacture what we call the protein food. So every time you eat any protein food like cowpea, beans, uh, meat, and all of this, anytime you, you take protein food, you're taking nitrogen to your body. So don't worry whether you're breathing in or not. In the food, the protein food we eat, nitrogen we get in our body. Now let's take a look at the properties of uh, nitrogen. Let's take a look at the properties of nitrogen. Okay? So we say also nitrogen is a is colorless. It's a colorless uh, gas with no smell. Also, it doesn't smell like hydrogen. The hydrogen is colorless and with no smell. Same with nitrogen. It's colorless and with no smell. Then another property of nitrogen is that it's slightly soluble in water. Slightly soluble in water. Not completely soluble. It's slightly soluble in water. Solubility in water means it can dissolve in water. That's what we mean. So meaning when we say slightly soluble in water, means partially. This can partially dissolve in water. The another property of nitrogen is that it's unreactive compared to oxygen. It's unreactive compared to oxygen. Oxygen is very, very reactive. And it's from oxide in most compounds, okay, most elements. Oxygen is very, very reactive. When we compare it with, we're not saying nitrogen is unreactive completely, but when we are comparing with oxygen, it can be considered unreactive, okay, because it's, uh, it's nowhere near the reactivity of uh, oxygen. So we can say it's unreactive when we're comparing this with oxygen, when we're comparing it with oxygen. We say it's unreactive when we compare with oxygen. Now, but it's, we react with uh, hydrogen to form ammonia. Nitrogen, we react with, uh, with, uh, if you react with, uh, okay, we've written the equation for water before. So now let's write the equation for uh, ammonia. How it reacts, Nitrogen react with uh, so we say nitrogen. Let's write the equation because we made a big statement, a Bogorov statement. So we say nitrogen, nitrogen gas. Okay, we react. The gas is a state symbol. Every equation you write, please remember to write your state symbol. We react with uh, with uh, hydrogen. We react with hydrogen, and this process is called the Haber process. The Haber process. We react with hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen gas to produce ammonia. But the reaction is a reversible reaction. It's a reversible reaction. What do we mean by reversible reaction? Okay, it means it has forward reaction to produce ammonia and it has backward reaction. At equilibrium stage, it will it will go back, with the product you form will go back to form the reactor. Okay, the, it's going back and forth. So there are conditions to maximize your yield Okay, that one we'll do in another chapter, how to maximize your yield other, uh, this any, in any reversible reaction. So, ammonia is produced in this case. Ammonia is NH3, NH3 gas. Ammonia is also a gas. Okay, so hydrogen reacts with, uh, uh, with nitrogen to produce ammonia. So, here you can balance. You can see this is non-balanced. We have two atoms of hydrogen. We have uh, three atoms of hydrogen. So, what if, what if we make... What if we make the this place, we put two here. So hydrogen will be six. 
two times three, the atoms of hydrogen on the on the product side will be six. Will be six. Okay, let's put the gas here. Okay. Atoms of number of atoms of hydrogen on the product side will be six. And then nitrogen is now two. Two times one is two for nitrogen. So nitrogen is already balanced. So what we should do to the reactant, the hydrogen, we put three here so that it can be six also. We put three here. So this is the equation for for nitrogen. We say nitrogen react with, with hydrogen to produce ammonia. Ammonia is the second most manufactured chemical on earth. It's the second most manufactured chemical on earth. It's used for making fertilizer. It's used for making so many things. Okay, we're going to come to that later on. Then another property of nitrogen. Remember we are describing the property of nitrogen. Another property of uh, nitrogen is that it uh, forms oxides with oxygen at high temperature. Okay, uh, uh, like the uh, nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, and so on and so forth. So nitrogen also combines with oxygen at high temperature to form oxides. Good example of the oxide that it can form include nitrogen monoxide. Okay, let's change the color. Nitrogen monoxide, NO. Nitrogen monoxide. So many carry out, nitrogen carry out with oxygen to form nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen dioxide okay so these are some reactions but this one doesn't just happen nitrogen does not just react with oxygen it requires very high temperature it requires a very high temperature the reaction occurs naturally in the air during lightning when there is a lightning lightning strike okay and then it, this type of reaction will occur naturally to produce either nitrogen oxide or nitrogen nitrogen dioxide is that okay okay so we say also inside very hot car engines also this type of reaction occurs nitrogen will react with the uh, uh, with the oxygen to produce nitrogen di the monoxide and nitrogen dioxide also in power station furnaces it uh, this reaction also take place because we have high temperature here okay so nitrogen oxide they are acidic oxide we know this right the nitrogen oxides are acidic oxides. In fact, all non-metal oxides are acidic oxides. Why metal oxides are basic oxides? We need to have a, a grip of that. We already have that. Now we go to the next one, which is ammonia. The next one, the next phase is ammonia. Now we already say this ammonia is we already mentioned how it is made. The process of making ammonia is called the Haber process. The process of making ammonia is called what? The Haber process. Okay? It's called the Haber process. We manufacture ammonia using what we call the Haber process. Now let's... The Haber process. Why sulfuric acid? We manufacture, manufacture the sulfuric acid using the contact process. Haber process. So this is the process we use in manufacturing ammonia, the Haber process. So you need to know. You need to know in case in multiple choice they ask you which of the following process is be used in the manufacture, manufacture of ammonia. So ammonia is manufactured using a process known as the Haber process. Ammonia is a gas with a formula NH3. That means NH3. We already show it here, NH3. Okay, this one is, is just means two molecules of ammonia. Okay. It doesn't mean anything, it just means two molecules of ammonia. So ammonia is actually NH3. NH3. This is the formula. Hydrogen and nitrogen react together to form a, this gas called ammonia. Okay? It's manufactured and the formula is NH3 and it's used for making what fertilizers. It's used for making NPK fertilizers and used for making ammonium fertilizers. Okay, so ammonia, one of the big use, you will be asked the question we arise, why do we have to manufacture ammonia? What do we need it for? Ammonia is used for making the fertilizers. One of the big use of ammonia is that it can be, is to be used to make uh, fertilizers. Now, the making of ammonia in the lab, let's take a look at it in the lab. In the lab, you have to heat ammonium compound with a strong base. With a strong base, we have to heat ammonium compound, ammonium compound like ammonium chloride, for example, with a strong alkali. When we say strong base, we are referring to alkali. You know, right? Base is just a metal oxide. Maybe, for example, it's a calcium oxide. That's a base. When we say the uh, alkali, 
calcium oxide. This is just a base, okay? But when we say calcium hydroxide, we are saying alkali, which is a strong base anyway. It's a very strong base. So this is a, a base. So when we use the word strong base, we are actually referring to alkali. Okay, so when we say calcium hydroxide, C-A-O-H, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, anything hydroxide, then this becomes an alkali and it's called, considered a very strong base. It's considered a what? A very strong base. So this is the formula for this. You know, uh, uh, how do we have this formula like this? As a while ago, we looked at uh, how chemical compounds are formed. You look at their, uh, you know, calcium, uh, give two elements in the, uh, has two uh, electrons in the atmosphere, right? So the two is here. OH has minus one. OH functional group has negative one. Okay, this is uh, plus two because it gives two electrons in the atmosphere. This one receives. Uh, so this one. So how to get how is this uh, calcium hydroxide like this? Remember, we say we cross multiply, but we don't use the sign negative or positive. We, we ignore, we ignore the sign, so we forget about the signs. We just use the numbers. So you cross multiply. This one will be here. We've done this a long a while ago, and then this one comes here. So if this one comes here, it becomes calcium and one. So no need to write one in maths or in chemistry or in physics. So we just write CA. Then this two is multiply, is being multiplied by this OH. Why we put bracket is because it's talking to both the oxygen and the hydrogen. The two is talking to both of them, both of these two elements. So we have to put bracket to show the two is talking to both of them. This is how the compound of calcium hydroxide is like this. This is why the formula for calcium hydroxide is CaOH, OH2. Okay, now this is a strong base. It's called alkali. This is called alkali. Strong bases are alkali. Okay, so we go back to what we are saying that you take ammonium chloride or compounds of ammonium react with a strong base you manufacture you get what we call we able to man, we'll be able to manufacture ammonia we'll be able to manufacture ammonia in the laboratory we're talking about in the laboratory okay making ammonia in the lab so one way is to heat ammonia compound with strong base so let's write the equation let's write the equation heat ammonia strong uh, compound now this ammonium compound we want to use, we want to use uh, ammonium is NH4. Ammonia is NH3, but ammonium is NH4. Ammonium is NH4. Ammonia is NH3. Is that okay? We, I, I hope we do. Ammonia and ammonium. Ammonia is NH3. This one, ammonia. Okay? It's a gas. Okay? Ammonia is a gas. Ammonia is a aqueous solution. Okay, so we take uh, ammonia compound. So to, we can say ammonia chloride. Since we say ammonia compound, we can use ammonia chloride, ammonia sulfate, but in this case, we're using ammonia chloride. So ammonia chloride react with a strong base. Okay, a strong base in this case, we want to use, we want to use calcium hydroxide as a strong base. Calcium hydroxide, these are strong base. Calcium hydroxide. So we take calcium hydroxide to react with ammonium, ammonium uh, chloride. Ammonium chloride is a uh, solid, okay? So now let's write the equation here. Right? We take ammonium, ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride, reactive, reactive means, when you say react, it means plus. Okay, here I put the state symbol, it's a solid. Ammonium chloride, which is a solid, React with calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is also a solid. Calcium hydroxide, strong alkali. Okay. Calcium hydroxide. Okay. React with calcium hydroxide, which is also a solid. To produce what? To produce what? So when these two things react, two, two chemicals react together, they'll produce new chemicals, right? This is that's why it's called a chemical reaction. There will be new product form. This product will be calcium chloride. See, this calcium will displace ammonia. We displace ammonia. Ammonia is seen as like an entity in ammonia. 
see like an, an, an entity to displace this ammonia to become calcium chloride. So a calcium chloride will be produced, calcium chloride, which is a salt, just like you have sodium chloride. A calcium chloride will be produced. Same here, we have two here. Why we have two? The same reason we have two here. Because this calcium gives two elements, so the two come here. Chlorine is one, one come here. So it becomes Cl, Ca, Cl2. So calcium chloride. So calcium chloride is manufactured. We balance the equation thereafter. Then plus, what else is manufactured? Water is manufactured. Why? One hydrogen here. One, hy one hydrogen. We join this two. We join this place to produce water. The one, one hydrogen here, so that it will be remaining NH3, so ammonia can be formed. Okay, so water will be formed, water will be produced, plus uh, H2O. We can balance the equation, don't worry about the balancing, there plus ammonia, ammonia gas that we are looking for. So this is one way of manufacturing ammonia in the laboratory. One way of manufacturing ammonia in the laboratory. You take ammonia, ammonia compound, like ammonia chloride, plus calcium, a strong base, calcium hydroxide, you produce calcium chloride, you produce water and you produce ammonia. Okay, so you, you already know this is a gas and this is liquid, water is liquid. So since ammonia is a gas, we put the state symbol. We just put G put bracket. Okay, water is liquid, you put L put bracket. Now let's uh, balance the equation. Let's change the color in order to balance the equation. Let's go for orange. Now let's balance this equation. So in balancing this equation, we can see that ammonia uh, here n n all the way here is uh, one right and here n is one okay uh, hydrogen here is two plus four that's six and hydrogen here is five hydrogen here is two and and uh, three five so we have to find a way to make it uh, to make it water. So what if we put two here? If we put two here, hydrogen here will be two times this, two times three, which is six. The hydrogen will be six here. Hydrogen will be two here, that's eight. So if it's eight here, we just come here and put two here. You see hydrogen two times four will be eight. So hydrogen will be eight here. So we say hydrogen is eight on the reactor side. And hydrogen is also eight on the on the product side. The total, the total hydrogen on the product side is eight. Two times three six plus this one. Okay, that's H is eight. So in balancing equation, see we we are learning uh, so many things in one small topic. H is eight. And then we see nitrogen is two here now. Nitrogen is also two here. I think hydrogen nitrogen is also so, sorted out. So nitrogen, I just write. N2. Also here I write N2 on the product side. On the reactor side, you write two. On the product side, we have N2. N is two. Okay, so what else do we need to balance in the equation? What else need needs balancing? We check others. Okay. I think hydrogen can go way more than that, right? Do we check the hydrogen here? Hydrogen here, we have two here, plus, okay, see, hydrogen is not balanced. We have two times uh, four, eight, and we have two here, ten. So hydrogen on the left here, on the reactor side is ten. Okay, hydrogen on the product side is eight. So we need to put two here. So two times two, two times two, we have four. 4 plus 6, because 2 times uh, two times uh, 3 is 6. 4 plus 6, that's 10. Hydrogen is now 10. So hydrogen is 10. Hydrogen is 10 on the left, 10 on the right. So calcium is 1, calcium is 1. Chlorine is 2 here. These 2 run the molecule times this 1 chlorine. Chlorine is 2 on the left, chlorine is 2 on the right. Now let's check oxygen. Oxygen is uh, two here, and oxygen is two here. So everything is balanced. So this is the balance equation. This is the balance equation for, for oxygen is two, 
On the left, oxygen is equal to 2. On the right, oxygen is also equal to 2. Oxygen is also equal to 2. Okay, nitrogen, we already said about nitrogen. Calcium is 1, 1. So, as soon as before. So, this is balanced. So, in the laboratory, we can manufacture ammonia by taking ammonia chloride to react with a strong base, strong alkali, such as calcium hydroxide. Uh, calcium hydroxide. When that happens, produce calcium chloride, which is a salt. This is a salt. Produce calcium chloride, which is a salt, plus water, plus water, plus ammonia, plus water, plus ammonia. So we are interested in only the ammonia, so we collect the ammonia. Okay, we collect the ammonia and make use of what we are interested in. Okay, so that's that for that's that for that. Let, let, let's take a look at the property properties of ammonia. Let's take a look at the properties of ammonia. We say ammonia is a colorless gas with a choky smell. Although it's colorless, but it has a very pungent smell. It has a very disturbing smell. Choky. It will be choky as if you want to seize your breath. Okay? So it has a very strong smell. So that's the first property. Number two is that it is less dense than air. Even the ammonia gas itself is also less dense than air. So it's less denser than air. Meaning air is denser. It means air is denser than uh, the, the, this gas. Then ammonia gas also react, say react with hydrogen chloride gas to form a weak, a, a white smoke. So it can react with uh, ammonia gas can react with uh, hydrogen chloride gas to form a white smoke called the ammonium chloride. So how is the ammonium chloride made? The one we use here, this ammonia chloride. How, how do we manufacture this? If you want to manufacture ammonia chloride, how do we get it? The one we use. How do we get it? Where do we get it from? This ammonia chloride. Okay, it can be manufactured also. It's a chemical that can be manufactured. How? To manufacture it, okay, we say let's write an equation for it here. If you want to make ammonia chloride, what do we need to do? If you want to make ammonia chloride, what do we need to do? We take ammonia gas to react with hydrogen chloride gas. We take ammonia gas because we, we want to make, it's very logical. You want to make ammonium chloride. You want to make ammonium. So you need ammonia, right? So we take ammonia gas to react with what? Because we need one hydrogen to join it. So we need a gas that also has hydrogen, which is hydrogen chloride. We want to make ammonium chloride. So we need a gas that has both hydrogen and chlorine. We need a gas that has both hydrogen and chlorine. So when we react them, ammonia, uh, uh, hydrogen chloride gas, react with ammonia, this one atom, one atom of hydrogen, we come and join this, uh, this three here, Had, uh, three atoms of hydrogen, become four, four atoms. Okay, you become uh, four atoms of uh, hydrogen. Okay. And the uh, chlorine. So it becomes four atoms. See, NH4. Instead of NH3, it becomes NH4. It becomes NH4. So ammonium. And then this chlorine, we also combine with it. This chlorine, we also combine here. Okay? It becomes ammonium chloride. And this ammonium chloride is a solid. It's not a gas. So even though two gases react together, the product we got here was a solid. It solidifies, okay, to form a solid. This is how we make ammonium, uh, ammonium chloride that we use in making, in making ammonia. This is how we, we just take um, uh, already ammonia we have, the um, ammonia we already have before, we react with hydrogen chloride to make more ammonium chloride so that we can make, we can also use it to make more ammonia. Is that okay? Vice versa. Now we say ammonia, is very soluble in water. It's very, very soluble in water. Meaning, it will mix with water completely. It will dissolve in water completely. Very, very soluble. It's soluble in water. Okay? It's very, very soluble in, in water. Okay? Now, again, we say the solution in water is alkaline. If you put ammonia in water, it becomes alkaline. If you know the pH K, okay? Uh, on this uh, left side is acidity. Increase the acidity. This left side is acidity. 
On this left side is acidity. Okay. On there we have the pH of seven. Yes, seven, which is neutral. This is neutral. Neutral. And then we have alkalinity. Here, eight to fourteen. 8 to 14. This is alkali. This side is alkali. If you look at the PSK. Okay, we just give, give you a, a small, small overview of the things you should know. The things you should know. In acid bases are salt. You study acid bases are salt. These are things you should know. Here is 1 to 6. 1 to 6. This is acidity. This one is the neutral, okay? This one is the neutral. Seven is neutral. Seven is neutral, which is pH of water. Seven is neutral, which is water. Here is water. Here is acid. Here is acid, and here is alkali. Okay, we say uh, ammonia, when you put it in water, it becomes an alkali. So it will be on this way. It has a pH from 8 to 14. The pH of ammonia is between 8 to 14. So it reacts with acid to form salt. Yes, ammonia will react with acid to form a, a salt, like ammonia chloride. See? It can react with hydrochloric acid. Even if you don't say hydrogen chloride gas, it can react with hydrochloric acid to form ammonia chloride salt. This is a salt. Ammonia chloride is a salt. Okay? So we can use ammonia to make salt. We can use ammonia to make a salt. Okay, so these are some of the properties of uh, ammonia. So I think uh, today we will stop here. In our, uh, uh, we've uh, still on the properties of ammonia. Ammonia can also react with uh, nitric acid. Apart from we measure hydrogen chloride gas just now, it can also react with nit nitric acid. Let's just write the equation for the acid, and then we close the class for today. Ammonia can also react with nitric acid uh, HNO3 this is a nitric acid HNO3 to form to form a salt to form a salt if you form uh, this nitric acid is aqueous ammonia is a gas is aqueous you can always put stay symbol when you write chemical equation okay ammonia you can also say it's an aqueous it's not all the time it's a gas it can be an aqueous also so the aqueous ammonia react with the aqueous uh, nitric acid to form ammonium nitrate, to form ammonium. How? This one, we take this hydrogen, it becomes four. Always, when you react with acid, we take this hydrogen to become uh, ammonium. That's NH4. So it reacts, it becomes NH4, which is ammonium. And then this nitrate will join, and NO3 will join to become ammonium nitrate. You can have ammonium chloride, ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, depending on the acid it reacts with. Depending on the acid. If you react with sulfuric acid, it becomes ammonium sulfate. If you react with sulfuric H2SO4, it will become ammonium sulfate. If you react with uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, it will form ammonium sulfate. So this hydrogen we join here become uh, H4. Uh, even though there's more, we will balance, you just need to balance the equation. Uh, NH4, uh, SO, SO4, become ammonium, become ammonium sulfate. Ammonium sulfate. Become ammonium sulfate. And you also react with hydrogen chlor hydrogen, uh, hydro uh, hydrochloric acid. If you react with hydrochloric acid, H HCl, this same element ammonia. If you react with if you react with hydrochloric acid, it will form ammonium chloride, like the one we made here. It will form ammonium chloride. So, but in aqueous form, it produce ammonium chloride. Produce what? Ammonium chloride. So this is how uh, the salt, ammonia is used in making salt. So ammonia, because it can act as an alkali, you know, alkalis are used for making salt. They react with acid to make salt. Okay? So it, same with ammonia, same goes with, goes with ammonia. 
he had with the all this acid to form the salt of it okay so this one will be ammonium chloride if you have with hydro, uh, hydrogen chloride uh, hydrochloric acid if you have with hydrochloric acid you form ammonium chloride so it depends on what it, the acid if they have with that determines the type of salt that is there be formed that determines the salt that is be formed okay so that's where we stop for today and thank you for thank you for joining us